Hello Richard, welcome to the Strategy as Practice vlog. Today Hi. we speak about um, your paper Completing the Practice Turn in Strategy Research, which was published in Organization Studies in 2006. And to stay within your terminology, um, how did you actually figure out a practice turn was happening back then? Okay, so the, by practice turn I was referring to what seemed to be quite a broad growing interest in practice theory in particular. Um, I'd seen that in the management learning literature. I, one of my first projects in strategy as practice was how do people learn to strategize. And here I was inspired particularly by the work of Jean Lave and, and Wenger and people like that. I also had colleagues at the business school here in Oxford, people like Chris Chapman, who were doing work in accounting, uh, accounting as practice. And the turn, if that's the word we want to use, the turn has since spread to marketing as practice, leadership as practice, and entrepreneurship as practice, uh, information strategy as practice. So the, the, uh, there's been a widespread, throughout the management sciences or management disciplines, a widespread turn towards practice theory, as it has been actually throughout the social sciences in general. Um, according to Google Scholar, completing the practice turn is actually your uh, most successful paper in terms of citations. Uh, how do you explain the impact of this paper? Okay, well, I have to admit, first of all, that citations aren't that always a great and reliable measure. Um, I think, to a certain extent, if it has been successful, then I was lucky in the timing. Uh, it, to an extent, it was the first time that we had, in the strategies practice uh, movement, as it was beginning to emerge at that time, it was the first time we would really articulated uh, strategies practice in terms of practice theory. Before we'd been rather implicit about theory, we were it, we had a phenomenon, strategizing or micro strategizing by managers deep inside organisations. But we hadn't yet made the link very systematically to practice theory. And indeed, there was a special issue of the Journal of Management Studies in, in 2003, edited by Jerry Johnson, Leif Melin, and myself, which didn't have um, much reference to practice theory. So the 2006 paper was useful because it linked to practice theory. I had certain other features which may or may not have been a, a help, I don't know, but there was an alliterative framework, the one that refers to practices, practices and practitioners. It's handy to have three Ps. And um, the paper applies it to a mini case of strategy practice, in other words, strategy scenario planning. Um, a last thing which I should mention too, I think, was that Paula Jaskowski, Julia Balligan and David Seidel took up the 3P framework in the special issue of human relations um, in 2007 on strategizing the challenge of a practice perspective. And the challenge of a practice perspective really underlined the importance of practice theory. Um, you already mentioned this, um, what you call a meta-theoretical framework in your paper. Um, and you argue that in order to understand strategy making, we should pay attention to these three Ps. So practices, practitioners and practices. Looking backwards or looking backwards on the last 15 years, um, which of those P's you would say was uh, most successful or most well received in SAP research? And maybe which of those P's has been um, a bit more complicated to integrate into further research projects? Well, of the three P's, I think if it's not too paradoxical, I think the work on praxis has been the most important uh, and successful. Now, praxis is quite a complicated concept, especially in English, maybe less in German. Um, the distinction between praxis and practice is quite hard to, to make. Um, but praxis refers to the work or the activity of strategizing. So, by contrast with practices, which are the tools, the routines, uh, the discursive resources, and so on and so forth, that one uses in that work. So there's a, there's a fine distinction, a distinction which is harder to make perhaps in English than in other languages, but it did actually provide a unique avenue or route into a new research 
uh, domain. And people began with the focus on Faxis to look very closely at what people were actually doing when they were doing strategy work. And that's been a, a great success. So in ways that I didn't imagine and in ways that senior colleagues of mine at, in the late 1990s and early 2000s as we're beginning to think about this sort of thing, in ways that they didn't think was possible, we have got very intimate access, great opportunities to observe the actual work of strategizing in ways which have been very revealing about the roles of language, about the role of power, about the role, role sometimes of gender, the role of local culture, and the role particularly recently um, of social material technologies in strategy. We had up until that time, I think, thought of strategizing as largely a cognitive or conceptual analytical process. Now we know very, from very close observation, it's a material activity as well. Yeah. Um, and that's been a huge advance. So Praxis is a difficult concept, but it has opened a window into a domain of activity that um, had been understudied and indeed that people didn't think was studyable at the intimate level involving ethnography, video ethnography and similar techniques. We just didn't believe that would be possible 15, mm -hmm. 20 years ago. If I remember correctly, your paper was also the first SAP paper that I actually came across as a student. Um, oh, and so now, <laughs> a couple of years later, I kind of moved over to the other side of the classroom and I'm wondering uh, if I want to use your paper for teaching, how should I go about? So what are your experiences? Maybe which other literature should I contrast and compare it with in the classroom? Well, in the classroom, the classrooms of all sorts. If I was teaching MBAs or maybe advanced undergraduates or similar, I would apply the 3P framework to case studies. Now, there's a case study of a strategy retreat in, uh, undertaken by Microsoft in the ninth edition of Exploring Strategy. Um, and there you could, you could ask, well, were the right practitioners there at that particular strategy retreat? No, it was the wrong group of people. Uh, was, were the practices correct? No, too luxurious, too um, competitive. Um, was the practice effective? No, Bill Gates was actually really quite clumsy and bullying. So you could use that sort of framework to open up those sorts of questions. I think, too, you could use similar um, 3P approach to exploring open strategy initiatives. So, for instance, uh, Cecil Neely and Paul Leonardi have a, a nice paper on um, using social media in an open strategy initiative, Strategic Management Journal 2018. And there you can ask similar questions about the three Ps. And in particular, what's interesting is how particular practitioners move in and move out of the process as their praxis um, uh, evolves over time in this particular case. They're using a new practice, social media and strategy. Wrong practitioners involved at one point, different set of practitioners involved towards the end as praxis evolves. So you could do all that. For research students, what I would do um, is actually uh, the 2006 paper built on um, a case study uh, published in organization studies by Hodgkinson and Wright. They took a different approach to my more practice theory one, and they did a paper, Hodgkinson and Wright, 2006, neither completing the, the practice term nor enriching the process tradition in um, repost to my interpretation of their data. Um, to give myself credit, I, or at least to give myself a chance to defend my interpretation, I'll mention that I provided a report to their report, learning more from failure in organization studies as well. So for PhD students, it would be interesting to compare a practice interpretation of that particular case study with the more psychological interpretation that Hodgkinson and Wright used. And I think that will draw out the distinctive strengths and limitations of both the practice and the psychological um, approaches to understanding particular strategizing situations. In your recent book, Opening Strategy, which was only published a couple of weeks ago, I guess um, you add a fourth P to your framework, which is professions. 
What made you amend the initial framework of three Ps? Well, what I was trying to uh, follow there in opening strategy was the way in which new practices are created in strategy as a field, what I call strategy with a capital S, over long periods of time since the 1960s to today. So I look at particular practices and how they're created by strategy professionals, typically that's strategy consultants or in-house uh, strategy, corporate strategy officers and, and similar to that. So they, they've been sources of inno innovation. They form in some sense a loose profession. And so I added the P um, to the other three Ps to emphasize there's something about strategy as a field which is cross-organizational, which is macro SAP, as I call it, which covers many, many organizations. Many, many organizations use similar practices of scenario planning, strategic planning, blue ocean strategy, open strategy, and so on and so forth. These are common across many organizations. And so my endeavor in, in the book, Opening Strategy, is to think about macro SAP, not just as what happens in particular organizations, but what happens across and how innovations happen across many, many countries. So what happens in Europe and the United States and advanced economies around the world, there are certain common strategy practices which we can grasp through um, the P of profession. I, I will add, uh, just as a last um, note, that P could be replaced by an S, the societal context. It's not alliterative, but I think one of the opportunities in the future is to think about the S as part of a macro SAP perspective, um, pointing to the way in which national contexts, for instance, social contexts within particular countries affect the way strategizing is done. And I'm going to mention here uh, an early step in this direction is a study of strategizing in China, um, forthcoming in long range planning by uh, Chris Anthem and Erin Ova. And I think that's an, another way of doing macro SAP work and one with a great deal of potential. Okay, thank you. So we will link uh, all the papers that you mentioned and also your book in the description of this video. Um, so in order for our visitors to follow up on them. But until then, um, thank you very much for your time and for shedding some more light on this key paper in the Strategy as Practice repertoire. Thank you. Thanks, Max. I enjoyed it. Thanks for the chance to speak to you. <laughs> Bye. Goodbye. Creating an SAP blog post is easy and fun. If there is an SAP-related paper that you feel excited about and that you would like to talk about with its author, please don't hesitate to get in touch with us. You find the contact details of the SAP Social Media Committee in the details of this video.